Now, speaking of Netflix, just last week on Friday, a interesting mini documentary, mini series, if you want to call it, uh, came out. It's called Last Chance You. Now, I knew it was about Juco, and I've been hearing about it like uh, two weeks before it came out. I was like, oh, this you know looks pretty good. Watch the trailer. I was like, man, this should be fun to watch. It's about East Mississippi Co- Community College. Now, the story takes place, uh, if you haven't seen it already, it's, it's, uh, it takes place, uh, it's Last Chance You, and it's a six-part documentary series that dropped Friday on Netflix. Now, it is binge-worthy because this is coming from the guy who apparently had nothing else to do and lost track of time. I I sat and watched the entire six episodes all the way through in one sitting. That's like they're each fifty two to fifty five minutes, and this guy sat through and watched all six six hours of this show all the way through. One, because it was that good. Two, I, l- I really did lose track of time. I had other things to do. I promise you, I did. Just forgot. I watched it early in the afternoon, found myself eating dinner later that night. I was like, holy crap, I was on the last episode, and I I just watched through all of it. It's crazy, but it, it is that good, and it gives you a behind-the-scenes look at the 2015 season of East Mississippi football team and its quest to win its third straight National Junior College Athletic Association Championship. Now, if you're like most, you probably really didn't hear about this school too much, unless you're in the, the Southern East. You know, they had guys like Garen Blunt went there. Chad Kelly's the most recent uh, success story. He went there uh, after Clemson and then obviously transferred to Ole Miss and became the quarterback he is right now. Uh, but it is very interesting. I'm going to give you a little detailed on it. It's a little review uh, of it. Now, if you haven't seen it, I'm not giving anything away, so don't worry. No spoilers here. Uh, but again, it is a football documentary, so it's not like you could always just go look at the stats and, and see if they, they win or not. Uh, but anyways, like I said, it's six hours. Total thing. And it's raw. Completely raw. Great editing, but uh, just everything they everybody who put it together just did an amazing job. They let everything you wanted to see in there, and they didn't really leave anything out. It wasn't like, man, I, I wish, wish we could saw more of that or anything. You saw it all, and it was great. It was great, and it was a little upsetting about some of these players because you're like, man, I, I wish I could help them change their mindset on certain, certain things and and things like that. But again, it, it's just it. They did it perfectly. They did it perfectly. Uh, again, it is a JUCO setting that makes the documentary so special. Now, none of the players wanted to be in Scuba. That's where it's Scuba, Mississippi, a town of just over 700 people, and they hope it's just. A quick little stop before they could take their 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 talent to the big time college football division one ranks. So some of them have interesting stories. DJ Law, the running back, who you'll get to see, uh, division one talent, bad academics, very bad. I'm not saying he's dumb. It's just he do, he skips class. He doesn't go to class. That kind of hurts your grade a little bit. You also had former Florida State quarterback John Franklin III, who wasn't very successful at Florida State, didn't get his time, and he was uh, complaining because he was a big dog on campus in high school, goes to the big-time school, and he thinks he could just step right on in. So he comes to a community college, and you get to see him, and honestly, he's my least favorite. He is my least favorite from just the way he acts. There, there's a, a, a difference, a huge difference, and you'll quickly see which side you're on. So if you haven't seen it yet, I want you to l- just take this. There's one side of confidence, believing in yourself that you have the talent to go out there and help your team win. And then there's cockiness. And you will see John Franklin III on just one side of the metro, and that is cockiness. He doesn't know how to control his confidence. His ego is huge for someone that it shouldn't be at all. And I just, I, I don't like him. I do not like him. If I, if I was a college recruiter, I'm not touching him. And you see how it goes throughout the season, how he handles some situations that come his way. And there's some parts, and especially early, you start, uh, you know, really wanting him to do good. And not saying I don't want him to do good. It's just 
I just don't like him anymore after watching it. Uh, and, and last but not least, oh, college football news. Uh, it, it shows a difference between the college football on Saturdays and Division One, and how you've seen those other documentaries, other mini shows, and their development from freshmen or even redshirt freshmen to their uh, junior, senior year before they go out. And these JUCO guys, you know, one they're worried about is anybody even watching them, right? You know, the scouting and everything that goes into it, is it, are they even being watched when they have a good game? It's always in the back of their mind. Also, if they get hurt, it's only, it's a very short season. I believe it's only a 10-game season, and then you have three rounds of the playoffs. And then it's it. That's it. So you have a very t- very limited time to get scouted. So if you get hurt, which a player does, and you'll see that, how does this affect his recruiting? And then where his mindset goes afterwards. Uh, then you also, one of my favorite players, uh, two of my favorite are DJ Law and Ronald Ollie, who you'll get to meet, uh, I think, like two or three episodes in. Very likable, very talented, and very funny. Uh, but academic issues and a few other, how he handles some situations when the, he is giving good advice and how he handles that. Um, but it also comes from you learn about a horrific family tragedy that's very sh- shocking and very just blunt. They just throw it right at you. Uh, and it's revealed midway through the series, and you're just like, whoa, okay, I get it, I get it. Wow. And then how you react to that. All six episodes of Last Chance You are uh, available on Netflix right now. So, again, if you haven't seen it, what have you been doing? And two, must watch it. But you need to have a strong enough will to not just go through it. You want to maybe watch one or two episodes first, right? And then skip a day, go back to it. Spread it out. It's probably a lot better. Me, six hours straight through. If you want to do that, that's fun too because it's it's that good. It just it keeps drawing you and just keeps like, do you want to continue to watch? Yes, yes, yes. And bam. But – I liked it. Out of a 10 scale rating, I will give it an 8.7 just because I feel like there could have been a little bit more stuff in it. But overall, it hit the point, uh, and you're just wishing there were kind of a little bit more. I don't like one of the cameramen, what he said to DJ Law, which you'll see when the cameraman actually said something. I was just like, really? Your time to encourage, and you let him go the other way. But anyways, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to watch it. Tell me what your favorite part of Last Chance You was if you've already seen it. And if you haven't seen it, again, go watch it. Go watch it.